Yep, that's right, 27 free laptops. I seem to have a knack at finding things. I don't know why, but I won't question it for now. Instead, I'm going to dig through and talk about what we have here and see what works and what doesn't, and hopefully make a quick buck by the end of it. One day as I was going to work, I got a text from an IT pal of mine who asked if I wanted a mountain of laptops. I said yes because, well, why wouldn't I? And here we are. But why were these laptops being given away? Well, they would be recycled otherwise since the IT department he was working for was going fully remote, so everything had to go. All-in-ones, desktops, tablets, and laptops. The only thing he asked of me was to fix up four of them for his family, which I think is fair enough considering I could make plenty of money selling the other 23 for the small amount of money it would cost to fix and give four away. But I am getting ahead of myself. For now, let's analyze each make and model to see what we have here. We have Lenovo, Hewlett Packard, and Dell, with the majority of which being Lenovo's. There are six different models in total, but we are only going to be looking at them one at a time for the most part. Starting with this HP a 15-inch ProBook 6570B, running an i5-3210M CPU, clocked at 2.5GHz with a boost to 3.1GHz. It only has two cores and two threads, sadly, but it does have a 1080p screen that's refresh rate reaches 120Hz, a microphone and headphone jack separately, four USB ports along with other random ports that no one will ever use again, 4GB of DDR3 RAM, clocked at 1333MHz, with an extra slot left over for an easy RAM upgrade, and impressively, a display port. This is the only ProBook I have in the collection of 27 laptops, and honestly, I kinda like it, even though today it is kind of basic and would only be used for just the simplest of tasks. Moving on to our next laptop is a Dell Latitude 3590, another 15-inch business laptop with an i5-8250U on board. It's clocked at 1.6 GHz, but it makes up for its low base clock speed with a 3.4 GHz boost. It is a very appealing laptop with its 4 cores and 8 threads, especially because of its 8 GB of DDR4 24 MHz RAM, which can be doubled no problem due to its extra dim slot. It can even house an NVMe M.2, which only makes this laptop more valuable. However, it only has two USBs and compromises on that with a micro USB Type-C port but ultimately makes it a hard laptop for someone like myself to want, as its full resolution for this model is 1366 by 768. It does have an HDMI port to the very least, but nothing else really noteworthy beyond that. I have another one which is a Latitude 3500 respectfully. It is similarly specced, but for some reason it had a DDR4 2066 MHz stick of RAM in it, which reminds me to remind you guys that these laptops were either torn to pieces to be salvaged, or were damaged one way or the other and needed to be repaired. So they were stuffed in boxes and were put to the side for the electronics repair worker at the company my friend worked for to eventually get to and fix, or write off if not feasible. So just in case I make a mistake in my research on any of these specs, note that many of these may have aftermarket parts or have been repaired despite what I find in some of them. Now let's get back to the rest of these laptops by checking out our third model. I have many Lenovo ThinkPads in this collection of laptops. 19 of them, in fact. And the one I like the most that I plan to really use is the Lenovo ThinkPad p 51 s a mobile workstation with a lot of little things that just really make me excited to try working from a laptop again. For starters, our CPU is an i7-6500U, which is clocked at 2.5 GHz with a boost to 3.1 GHz. It really isn't special, especially since it only has two cores and four threads, but it does have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM clocked at 2133 MHz, which makes it a lot more usable and only leaves our bottleneck to just the CPU. The onboard graphics are nothing special for a simple working laptop. It doesn't matter really when you're doing basic mobile tasks or remote work. More importantly, it has an HDMI port, three USBs, a Type-C, and a load of other miscellaneous ports. However, my favorite part is that it has a 1920 by 1080 p ISP display which really makes it usable for any sort of work I might do. There are a bunch of things I could go into, but the only two things I feel like anyone would care about with this that I will mention is the fact that it has 
fingerprint reading tech so you can log right in and access your stuff in theory with no passwords, and the design to hold two batteries at once. It is missing one, so I will have to get another online if I plan to use this laptop long term. On to our next Lenovo, the ThinkPad T460, an excellent laptop with an i5-6300U CPU clocked at 2.4GHz with a boost to 3GHz, paired with 8GB of DDR RAM clocked at 2133MHz. The first downside to a laptop like this is while the CPU is not half bad, it only has two cores and four threads. It does have a dual battery setup though for extended charge life. Hmm, seems kind of familiar. Anyways, we only have two USBs and not much else besides an HDMI and a mini display port to write home about. But this laptop has a few designs that aren't visible at a glance that make up for this completely. It is very lightweight despite having an aluminum frame and body. We also get Bluetooth which means we can connect a controller to the laptop and use it for some light game emulations on the go. But honestly what makes this a keeper for many is that it's a 14 inch 1440p ISP display. An excellent screen for anyone that outshadows the small things that many would push people away. Splendid. Our next laptop is a tad older, but feels very hands-on. The Lenovo T430S, another simple business laptop with a rugged tough design to it, has an i5-3320M, which is clocked at 2.6GHz, boosted to 3.3GHz with two cores and four threads. It only has 16GB of DDR3 RAM clocked at 1333MHz and a 1600x900P monitor, but this one seems not half bad, and what sells it for me is the fact that while the IOs are nothing special, with three USBs, mini display port, aux jack, and a CD drive tray, you get a hot swappable drive bay, which means you could quickly swap between drives in under a minute either using a separate OS altogether or troubleshoot a drive. For someone who is constantly running into older usable drives for either storage or a cheap way of running Linux or Windows for example, it's pretty useful for moments when I am going through a bunch of drives that most people would assume are trash or aren't worth saving anymore. But outside that and the hidden Bluetooth, that is about it for this guy. Nothing crazy under the hood, but plenty of usability for someone who works on old 2.5 inch disk drives. Our last laptop is the HP EliteBook 840G4 a serious business laptop with an i5-7200U holding two cores and four threads on board. Clocked at 2.5GHz, boosting to 3.1GHz, nothing really special honestly. Just a basic laptop with a 1366x768 display and 8GB of DDR3 RAM. It does have a display port, two USBs, and a Type-C port, but that's about it in terms of any noteworthy features. Oh, and the battery's ready to explode on this thing. The only reason it hasn't is because the sleeve holding the battery itself is made of a thick plastic as opposed to a thin piece that usually surrounds battery cells. I wonder if this was meant to be fixed for this reason, but it just got put on a back order since there are so many laptops here that need to be fixed or salvaged or whatever. Regardless, it's nuts this thing even functions and turns on to begin with. This one is going to have to be fixed ASAP if I want to avoid an accident. What a laptop to end on. Well, now that we have seen each model and their specs, what happens from here with all 27 of them? You may be able to guess that we will be selling most of them, as I really don't need 27 laptops for any real reason currently. However, I do plan to keep some of them, probably one of each model, but other than that, what, am I gonna just sell these laptops as is? Not quite. As I mentioned in the beginning, a lot of them were damaged or had parts missing, so what I will need to do is repair them and clean them up before they are ready to be used again. The one I currently have right here is an example of that. I will be selling it to someone I met recently who has a brother who wanted to get into Linux, so I helped them figure out what they were looking for and gave them one of the T460s that have a crisp 1440 ISP display. I am sure he is loving it now and will use it to become a Linux genius. So for the rest of them, I will just sell them on eBay, give them some RAM, new SSDs, or M.2's batteries, you know. Oh yeah, I did try gaming on one of them, the T460. I figured I would at least mention that and show it off. And for a free laptop, it looks great. It plays great too, as long as you know where to compromise and cut corners to get a good experience. Just don't expect any of these laptops to run AAA games. I could dig into the laptops more and pick them apart to learn all the little features they have and try to see which ones are the best, but honestly, I don't get paid enough to do all this. <laughs>
and I think most people would overlook the small details anyways. Still, I'm pretty lucky to have run into this find, and I want to hear from you guys on this one. Would you like to see more videos like this? Or do you want to see more PC builds and other things, like maybe even retro console stuff? I'm curious. Well, anyways, if you enjoyed this video, throw me a like. And if you want to see more content, subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.